I just got done going through hundreds of different ETFs, trying to find a few diamonds in the rough that have the potential to outperform the S&P 500 over long periods of time. I primarily accomplished this by going through all of the Morningstar rankings, seeing which funds did best in different categories, as well as just a brute force method. Using uh, ETFdatabase.com, I went through 75 pages of the top performing funds. Now, I could have saved myself a lot of time, effort, and research by just picking a few technology funds like VGT and say, these are the funds that outperform the S&P 500. And while that is true in the short term, if you go back far enough to the early 2000s, tech did really poorly, and it's extremely possible that could repeat itself at some point in the future. So for that reason, I wanted quality ETFs, not just tech because the recent history has been so good for them. And ultimately, based off of that criteria, these are the five ETFs that really stood out to me. So we're going to go over them in this video. I hope you guys enjoy, appreciate all my research. If you do, leave a like. And let's get right into this. So the names we have here in no particular order is Moat, ticker QGRO, SPGP, ticker OMFL, and then probably the most recognizable, well-known, most popular, SCHG. Now, when looking at ETFs, there's a ton of ways to interpret them. I think what most people do is they read the fund description, they look at the recent price performance, they look at things like the expense ratio, see if it fits into their overall strategy, and decide if it's a good investment or not. I, however, approach ETFs very differently. To me, the number one thing is the methodology. This, in my opinion, is what you're buying when you invest in a fund. And things like the price history is simply a reflection of how effective that methodology has been over time. Even when it comes to the holdings, this is very important, but it's just a snapshot of the current manifestation of the methodology. All these names are subject to change, and as we all know, the past price performance is not indicative of future price performance. The only thing that's constant here is the methodology. So beginning with Moat, this is their secret sauce. So Moat holds a concentrated portfolio of stocks that are attractively priced and have sustainable competitive advantages. Here's the full document explaining the entire process behind Moat. An economic Moat or competitive advantage allows a company to fend off competitors and earn substantial excess economic profits. We look at return on invested capital, ROIC, relative to the company's cost of capital to determine profitability. We think that ROIC is the best measure of economic profitability. This is a theme I noticed in their documentation. They are big fans of return on invested capital. And they argue that the wider the moat, the more of a competitive advantage a company has, the longer they can sustain above average return on invested capital. And to help confirm whether or not this methodology is effective, we can look at the total returns compared against the S&P 500. In the five-year view, we are consistently above the returns of the market. Moat did pretty solid back then. During the bull market of 2019, they extended their lead. They held up pretty well during COVID, had a strong recovery, was more robust in the market in 2022, and so far in 2023, extended their lead even more. And at this moment in time, here is a snapshot of the sector allocation and top 10 holdings that the methodology has selected for in the current market. I gotta say, it's kind of random. Uh, Domino's Pizza, number one, TransUnion, number two, Google, Comcast, uh, Salesforce. It's technology heavy at 21%, nothing too extreme. Healthcare, 17, finance, 16, and industrials, 15%. But again, this is just a snapshot of what the methodology is selecting for in this current market environment. And if we go through a pullback and technology becomes cheaper, I'm sure that would change the holdings. Okay, the next one I'm pretty excited about, this is ticker QGrow. So QGrow holds a broad portfolio of U.S. stocks with attractive growth and quality fundamentals. They begin with the largest 1,000 companies in the U.S. market, and they look at things like profitability, return on assets, return on equity, financial leverage, momentum. Growth is calculated for each of the remaining stocks by taking into account sales, 
earnings and cash flow growth, and analysis of price to earnings and price to book ratios. This is the complete fund literature. This is how they determine quality for valuation. They use these metrics right here. And then these are the growth attributes sales, earnings, cash flow. So they assign values to all those metrics and then they have a few mathematical formulas. And this is the historical results of all that work. I will point out in 2018 during that pullback, it did struggle a little bit more than the market, but it did pretty quickly recover matching that at the market. And then post COVID it did exceptionally well. Now, because this is a growth ETF, 35% of it is technology, but due to the late cycle tech rally we've been experiencing. It's not the traditional large cap tech names. We do have Google, Adobe right here, but we have other names like Booking Holdings. I'm assuming they have a very strong balance sheet to be the number one holding. And then other very cash flow rich companies like MasterCard and Microsoft. Next up is SPGP. And this seeks growth stocks that also contain quality and value traits. The catchphrase here is growth at a reasonable price. So just like with QGrow, this is a very technical approach, but it is still very different. Growth is calculated by primarily earnings per share growth and sales per share growth. And the determination of quality is an average of financial leverage, return on equity, and earnings to price ratio. And that has resulted in one of the top performing funds so far, a return over the past five years, a total return of 86.82% versus the market at 69.85%. The only thing I can point out here is it does have moments of above average volatility. So during the market crash of uh, 2020, it did go down more than the market. And more recently here in was that March of 2023, it had a pretty significant dip that the broader market just didn't have. And at this moment in time, energy is the biggest holding at a whopping 26%, followed by technology, a close second at nearly 20%. All right, moving on, the next one I have for you guys is a fan favorite, ticker OMFL. And this is quite different than the previous two funds because they take a look at broad economic cycles and use that to help guide them in their methodology. So they begin with the Russell 1000 index and they filter by value, size, momentum, quality, and low volatility. They have a rules-based methodology that relies on leading economic indicators and global risk appetite to determine the state of the current market cycle expansion, slowdown, contraction, or recovery. And the fund actively shifts exposure to favor the factors that tend to fare better in the given market environment. So that's certainly an interesting approach. You have to have confidence in the management to get this right. And the fund certainly does have a lot of growth, 86.67% over the past five years. And it's been ahead of the market every moment in the past five years, except for a small, contingent right here immediately after COVID. And right now, financials, consumer cyclical, and industrials compose the majority of this fund. And finally, we get to the last ETF here, which is uh, probably the most well-known ticker SCHG. And the simplicity here is one of the most beautiful aspects. So it selects growth stocks from the 750 largest companies by capitalization and has six fundamental factors, primarily including projected earnings growth along with revenue growth and trailing revenue and earnings growth. And that's basically it. It's a very simple approach, low expenses, and it is dominated by technology at 45%, holding lots of the large cap tech names like Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA that we're all familiar with. And putting them all side by side over the past five years, this is the total return benchmarked against the S&P 500 in the red color. And essentially all these names outperform the S&P 500 quite handedly ever since COVID during both a bull run a pullback and the most recent bull market. And the quote unquote winner, simply in terms of the best returns over the past five years by slim margin is SCHG, but it does have the most volatility. So it went from being up the most during the bubble of 2021 to down the most in the depths of the bear market. But again, these lines here are pretty to look at, but they really just verify the effectiveness of the methodologies. I think this is the most key thing when evaluating 
ETFs to invest in. Above all else, you're buying the methodology. The future price is very unpredictable. The holdings always shift depending on what the market is doing but the methodology, the criteria is the one constant. So let me know in the comments, which one of these funds do you guys prefer the most? They're all extremely high quality. If I had to pick two that are my favorite, I think I have to go with QGrow and Moat. When it comes to QGrow, the methodology is just bulletproof. They touch upon every metric I care about free cash flow growth, sales growth, return on equity, literally every metric. And the fund is mostly technology, which is something I prefer versus say ticker SPGP, which is mostly energy. The only downside I can potentially think of here is that the methodology is a little bit too complex. And then with Moat, as we saw by the returns, this proves the methodology has been extremely effective over time. And I think the focus on a competitive advantage that allows the company to have an above average return on invested capital, along with a valuation aspect, is a super awesome thing. But again, let me know in the comments below which one of these is your favorite, and do you currently invest in any of them? Let us know. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.